Sergeant Ruffles. But it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Sergeant Ruffles? Sergeant Ruffles? Are you a cocker spaniel, sir? Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new season of Press Any Chiodini. This season we're playing something very different indeed. It's Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, which takes Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes and mashes him up, not literally, if I play my cards right, with H.P. Lovecraft's uh, Cthulhu Mythos, which sounds like a, frankly, very interesting combination. So we're going to jump into that uh, in just a moment. But before then, I have a little statement to make. Um, I enjoy Lovecraftian horror, as many people do. I play the Arkham Horror card game a fair amount, for instance. I'm excited to play this video game. Generally speaking, like, you know, Cthulhu Mythos is kind of everywhere, and it is, I think, very, very potent. But still, there is an important bit of context that we ought to note, which is that H.P. Lovecraft was a massive racist and an anti-Semite, even for his time. He was really extreme. He was a white supremacist who praised Hitler and wrote some of the most abhorrent things about people of other races. Much of this stuff uh, can be found outside his body of work, uh, well, the body of work for which he's best known. Um, but, of course, threads of it are absolutely present in the horror stories that make up his literary legacy. Um, now, I'd like to crib here from the disclaimer included in the Fate of Cthulhu RPG rulebook by Evil Hat, part of which reads... Now that we've got that issue out in the open, let us turn our attention to why we still find the Cthulhu mythos, of which he planted the seed, a fruitful garden in which to find stories. Lovecraft once said, The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. He filled that void of knowledge with his imagination, creating old ones and forbidden knowledge, strange religions and fantastical superstitions, threats to society and suspicion of what science might unlock. We could acknowledge the fear behind his imagination while also reimagining what came out of it. Now, those words came from people much, much smarter than me, but in my own words, Lovecraft is dead. His works are in the public domain and we are free to reimagine and make something new from those creations without the bigotry that characterised him as a person. It's still important context though, hence me saying all this. I feel like it's worth being up front as we navigate basically a very tricky man. And finally, if me saying all of this bothers you, if you're planning to get frothy in the comments section, don't bother. I'm not going to listen to you because this video, this channel and probably me uh, are just not for you, and you're not going to be missed. So, there that is, we've said it, let's go play a video game. Alright then, let's do this thing. Um, I haven't played a Sherlock Holmes game in a very, very long time. I don't think I've ever played any of the current sort of run of them, so I'm excited to see how we get on with this one. There is no shame in asking for help. Press Z to highlight interactions near near you. I will, I'll be glad to. Shadow over London. That's Fleet Street, that, I think, maybe. Oh, no, it's Baker Street. Of course it's Baker Street. <laughs> Good one, Johnny. It's because St. Paul's was there. Mrs. Hudson! Dr. Watson? Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidy houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? Uh-oh. I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. All righty. Look, I'm Sherlock Holmes. Look at me go. And there's Watson. 
Where's the Afghan slipper full of tobacco? Where's the Afghan slipper full of tobacco? It's not there. Okay, never mind. That's all right. Maybe it's somewhere else. Let's focus, Johnny. Uh, let's see. Left click to interact with objects. All right. Let's look at the papers, shall we? Oh. London Advertiser, September 28th, 1882. Tensions, tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by Swedish Princess Ildur. Chief among the scandals was the embarrassment of the British Diplomatic Corps as a result of an unexplained disappearance of Prince, Princess Ildur's personal bodyguard. The long-time member of her inner circle took the opportunity to explore London while off duty and never returned from his late-night promenade. A spokesman for the police assures the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located as he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people. A man like that gets noticed, whether by his peers at the gentlemen's clubs or the fair nightingales who comfort them. Goodness me. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. All right. That's a book. Visit Barnes Bookshop. I don't know why that's stuck to it, but that's fine. What is this? Vote, vote, Vogel? Vote, vote, ve, ve, Virgil? Ve, Vogel. Another letter from Werner. Werner. They never reply, but they keep coming. Oh, all right. Okay. Is that everything here? Yeah, that's just supper. That's a teacup. That's a lamp. Now, let us look at these papers. Oh. Oh, we just... Can we just reach with our freakishly... Oh, we can move. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Please. No, why can't I get the... I want to pick up newspapers, not dinner. No. All right. That's fine. I'll just keep going round this way. Why, if I'm so keen for the newspapers, can I not pick up the newspapers. Is there anything else I can explore? Oh dear, am I going to feel very, very silly for this entire game. Hello Watson, let's talk to Watson. This mess is getting out of hand. What will the landlady think? Most of us put our thoughts to paper, not to walls, Mr. Holmes. Yes, well. Oh yeah, maybe we can look at the wall. No. All right, how to crack the case of picking up a newspaper. What, what am I missing here? Your order from Barnes ah. Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. Cool, we got there in the end. Well done, me. I don't see the strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick. Who? No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. Fun fact. Um, the Strand. Strand magazine was um, a... It was kind of like a Reader's Digest where they took sort of interesting newspaper stories from throughout the week and um, then they, they released it and people, you know, would just buy that and leave through it as a kind of way to catch up on the whole week. But it also included serialised stories from the likes of... Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, basically, uh, the, the first Sherlock Holmes stories were serialised in Strand magazine. Um, another fun fact, Arthur Conan Doyle did not enjoy writing Sherlock Holmes that much. He found it a little boring uh, because he preferred to write long historical novels. He used to do this in between seeing patients because he was, of course, a medical doctor. Um, but then... <laughs> Basically, Sherlock Holmes was so successful, and he, he was a bit kind of annoyed and didn't want to keep doing it, so he, he decided to kill off Sherlock Holmes um, by sending him over the Reichenbach Fall with his, his, um, his nemesis, Moriarty. Spoilers, obviously. Um, but, oh, no, 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 that, that came later. Um, he'd, he'd done a series of Sherlock Holmes stories, and um, 
the Strand magazine asked him to do another one and he was like, I, I don't want to do this. So he tried to price himself out of the market and he said, I won't do it for less than £5,000. And they said, fine. And he said, shit. Because he then had to, because the money was too good. So he wrote another series of stories, eventually killing off Sherlock Holmes by sending him over the Reichenbach Falls with Moriarty. Uh, spoilers, obviously. Um, and then he realised people were so distraught. He was like, oh, God, I've just got to keep writing these and reinserting them into the timeline and all this kind of stuff. It was very, very funny. So there we go. Also, Sir Arthur Conan, Conan Doyle's uh, uh, middle name was Ignatius. It's rainy today. Why not dress as something more appropriate for the weather? Open the casebook with C, navigate to the wardrobe ta with tab, and put on a hat. I'd love to put on a hat. A hat. A hat for Holmes. Well, it'd be rude not to. Let's have the deer stalker. And may as well put a coat on. Yes. Glasses? No. <gasps> Facial hair. Disguises. Oh, this is very... Oh, we can also dress Watson. Okay. There we go, look. There's me, Sherlock Holmes. Famous detective. 221B Baker Street. This looks very nice. It's very gloomy. Uh, it's raining right now. Oh, dear. That's the Strand magazine, You were right. mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. Oh. Okay. Well, can we can we have it, please? Well, that's a bone. Or is it a bone? What is that? A cactus spine. Oh. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. Lovely. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Old left shift to run. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Yes, please. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. What? Blast. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. What happened to my newspaper? You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here. Nothing gets past me, mister. I'm a brick wall, mister. Did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Yeah. Dr. Watson. Cool. Now I can take the day off. What did he do to the paper? Don't tell me about the man. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin they were. Why, that's Barnes. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Mm. What did he do to the paper? Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. Yeah. I had to protect the merchandise. Of course. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Where was he headed? Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. Well, that would be a very irregular form of employment. You've got a new que new question in your mind palace. Get the strand. Get your copy of Open the Open the casebook here. with C, then navigate to the mind palace. Inside, select relevant pieces of evidence to deduce the answer. Ooh, a mo ooh. 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 Oh. I didn't realise the mind palace was going to be quite so... goopy. Oh, it's hang on. I just remembered. This is... This is a Cthulhu Mythos game. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes! Barnes, the local bookseller, ruined the newspaper. The newsboy said the mysterious, the suspicious man was carrying a stack of books, and this morning Mr. Barnes, the local bookseller, del 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 delivered a novel to Dr. Watson. A cactus spine for assassination, a loud bang, a visit to Mr. Barnes is in order. Are we sure about the cactus spine? Holmes? Are we sure about that? Let's see. Mr. Barnes is involved in the scheme. Come now, Mr. Holmes. Murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but he also has Get his... Get the strand. Get your copy Not of the strand every pawn here. knows it's part of a game. Hmm. Oh, uh, pin the evidence with a bookshop photo by pressing X. Try to find the bookshop. Mr. Barnes, pin evidence. Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Okay. 
visit to Mr. Barnes is in order. Where's Barnes? Do you even have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. Hmm. Where is Barnes's bookshop? Help me, please. I wish I could help you, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. Hi. Sorry you're crying. Is the Japanese embassy? Hello, sir. Could you help me? No, I don't know anything about that. All right. Where's Barnes's bookshop? Smoking tobacco. A vet. Some sort of oh, a millinery. This is a very pretty um, environment, isn't it? Drug store, drugs, pianos, and organs. Stop in if you want a piano and a kidney. Talking of organs, there's a butcher's. And a man laughing very, very strangely. You there? You there? Help me, please. I don't think anyone here knows the All answer. All right. You should ask someone else. All right. Hello, horse. Nope. But where's the f news and reviews? Could you help me? I wish I could help, but I know nothing. I know nothing. <sighs> Heavy is the head that has to play as, as Sherlock Holmes. You know, literature's greatest detective. I know from what, how, uh, what Watson said that the bookshop is close, but I don't know where it is, and currently I'm just running around. Making myself look very silly. Get it at Lucky's Bar. Blimey. Is this Barnes's bookshop? No, it's a lock and key shop. Aha! Barnes's bookshop. I'm gonna go beat the shit out of him. Who reads in the pouring rain, sir? Barnes, you son of a bitch. Come here. Observe him. Observe. Fucking hell. Bags under eyes. The effects of overwork. Inky are dirty, dirty hands. Look at his dirty hands. Newspaper ink? Yeah, pro oh, newspaper ink from my newspaper. What is this? A confessional diary? Jesus, he does look tired. Is that all we get from him today? Back. No, did we need to see something more? Damn it, did I miss something? Oh, I feel so, so inadequate in games like this. Rotate. How do we rotate Barnes? <laughs> well, there's nothing going on up there. Or up here, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, you're, you are filthy, sir. Ah, aha! Scan penis. <gasps> aha! Dirt on the knee! Oh no, leans heavily on his right leg. He's got sore left leg. Okay. Possibly from a cactus. Have you got dirty shoes, mister? High heels? He wants to look taller. Interesting. Okay. Blackmail victim? What? Okie dokie. So, ink. Newspaper ink. High heels. Wants the taller leans heavily on his right leg. Sore left leg. Bags under the eyes. The effects of overwork. Got it. He has developed a limp, likely the result of an attack. He wears high heels to look taller or stronger, presumably to deter future violence. He's being threatened by someone and might be involved in a plot against me. Or... He's got the limp from working too long. He's not very confident and tries to appear taller. By wearing high heels, it seems unlikely that he'd be involved in the murder plot. Even though he's the one who sold the newspaper, he could be a pawn in a bigger plan plan without his knowledge. So is he the victim of blackmail, or is he a workaholic? I'm going to assume he's just a workaholic. That's what Mr. I Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Did he just leg it? 
who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we, uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just tag in a pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. Is there a dog here? What's that noise? Oh, there is a dog. Look. A dog. Hello, dog. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good A guard dog? dog. Is it a guard dog? Oh, my God. Press there to highlight interactive areas and the environment around you. Detective mode! The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Well, that'll be how he did his leg in then, probably. Oh, that is a troubling painting. I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. There were some weird noises coming from that room beyond. Like, I think it was him opening and closing drawers, but it did also sound a lot like some sort of horrible monster. I don't know. Ooh. Basics of cryptoanalysis. Cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okie dokie. This looks suspicious. Aha. Open up your heart, then we'll finally start. Uh, na, 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 na. Everlasting plants. Uh, a catalogue of exotic plants on Barnes's counter. The name of the catalogue reads Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Well, we know where the cactus needle came from and the potting soil. Did he nick the paper to wrap up a, a plant? The power of love, ma blood and mandrake. Ah. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Are you serious? Well, what if he's just a careless gardener? Holmes, I'm not sure about this. What else do I... Is that me sniffing? I smell crime. Oh. Something lit up there, didn't it? In the language of yes, Mycroft's yes, yes, agents, yes. it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job oh. is done. Ah, the books, the books. I wonder who the recipient is. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. Indeed. Indeed. What else is there? What am I missing? What am I missing? Oh, this is taking me back to a stream I did at GameSpot years and years and years ago where I just had, I was stuck in a room and I was completely baffled. And there were footprints and I kept measuring them and he just kept going, size nine. Size nine. Come on. Come on, what, what's the, what's the, what's the guy? What's the thing? Can cut ahead. Oh! Wait! Wait, ah! A woman? Wait. The finest view London has to offer. Okay. Oh, that's a flower shop. Why doesn't he just get fresh flowers? Is that a flower shop? It looks like one. What else have we got? We've got ourselves a Dr. Watson. Is that actually scan? That's interactable, then it's the door. Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. Yes, I dare say so. Okay. 
No, it seems like my app. I think that's everything. Should we go bother him again? Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. <sighs> Barnes, you odd, odd man. Let's go behind the counter. Really violate his uh, privacy. Yum. I suppose we could just leave? Is that what we're supposed to do? Well, I guess we're just leaving then. Now this is a flower shop. Let's talk to the lady. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. Now. Aha. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the queen. No. Oh. A missing sp cactus spine. Ah, whoop, ah. Tis cracked. Not is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. A newspaper, perhaps. Well, this is interesting. What else have I missed? There must be a missing spine. Or a broken one. A broken one. Familiar spine? Ah. Is this what I found in my dustbin? I think so. Barnes? Are you quite serious? It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Oh. Interesting. The plot. Anything tickle your fancy, Thickens. Mr. Holmes? Uh, some information, please. Wearing makeup for beauty or concealment. All right, judgy. Distant look avoids eye contact, on contact or distracted. This feels weird. Clean boots change shoes upon arrival. Size nine. Size nine. Morning brooch honoring deceased husband. Luxury fabric. Unusual for work attire. A black widow, perhaps. Mrs. Fleming wears a morning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable for work. Her shoes show no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search of something. Perhaps she is waiting. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of de her departed husband, she is trying to move on, as suggested by her makeup and nice outfit. Perhaps she is dressing to attract someone's attention, or simply because she has learned to love herself again. Or, Mrs. Fleming uses makeup to hide her tear stained cheeks. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable for outside work. Her shoes show no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. When she try while she tries to bury her grief by dress dressing extravagantly, she still wears a morning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her gaze, always staring off into the distance, reveals her emotional detachment. Taken on the whole, one must conclude that Mrs. Fleming is still reeling from her tragic loss. I reckon she's ready to move on. Go get it, girl. Why not? I hope I'm right. Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Oh, nobody. Oh. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. Provide evidence? Sure, yeah, all right. Fucking hell. Choose evidence. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Ah, okay. Provide evidence. Well, I don't want to select that. How do I deselect that? Oh, I am selecting that, okay. Uh, I'm a little confused by the AI. The UI, rather. I don't know how to um I don't know how to deselect that. 
Oh, space. Uh, exotic plants catalog. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. One of these things is not like the other. Uh -huh. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. What? What? Well, that's very odd. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Can you not? I'm oh, we can I just we can just keep. Oh, Holmes. we just keep asking her things. Got it. Are you sure you're asking the right person? Yes, yes. Well, I'm going to ask you seller. absolutely everything. What do you make of the flowers ha. in Barn Shop Window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything? How? I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh. I hope you're right. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. Cryptology books? Well, probably I'm not. I'm afraid I can't yep. help with that, Mr. Holmes. Ask him about the ladder. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Ask, ask about Barnes. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Oh. -ho. Well... In a way. A carnal what way? What does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then... We've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would edge such longing onto his face. You? Well, 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 Mr. Barnes has a crush. Has a crush. Okay, well, let's mind palace this. Why is Barnes acting so strangely? He's in love. Roses for sale? It's probably not that. Where's new dog? He fancies her. Mrs. Fleming on Barnes. Okay, Mrs. Fleming, Mrs. Fleming on Barnes. Do we remove... Right, H for help. Let's work out how this works. Mind Palace. In each chapter, questions will arrive, arise <coughs> Excuse me. in the course of your investigation. Questions are shown in the Mind Palace. Answer all questions to progress to the next chapter. This icon on HUD notifies you when there is a new question to answer in Mind Palace. Or... When you have enough evidence to answer one question, press C to get to the case book, yada yada yada. Press set the question you want to answer. Got it. Pin evidence. You can pin evidence from the case book. This icon. Oh, uh, no, wait, this is just mindful. Okay. Oh, wait, look, look at that. After selecting a question, try to answer it by linking relevant evidence. All evidence is broken into three categories. Each category appears on a different screen items, documents, and observation. When all correct links have been made, it will be combined. Often you will not have all the correct evidence to answer each question, so keep investigating until you do. Answering it with correct evidence on the first try, I can't see a bonus score. Well, we've, we've fucked that up, haven't we? Okay. What do we not have? Observations. Dead flowers on display. There we go, look. Mr. Barnes is in love with Mrs. Fleming. Barnes displays a bouquet of dead flowers to attract the attention of Mrs. Fleming, a florist. He may hope she will come into his shop and give him watering advice, or it could simply be a symbol of his desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus, which he ordered from the catalogue on his counter. A questionable choice, but for Barnes, 
a symbol of his eternal love, since the catalogue presents these cacti as immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on the strand outside 221B Baker Street. Now to hear the full story. Right then. I really wish questions weren't polyps, but... Hmm. I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Yes. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Yes. Mr. Barnes, she's into you. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. Mm. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes? It's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. All right, then. So, you know what happened, then? Hmm. I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package. Heavy, too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Dang. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. I know what to do. This really isn't my area. Ah, uh, well, let's say I know what to do. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts, and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. You're welcome. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper, I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. There you go. You had an issue of The Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. Very good. I'm... Oh no, uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation, and, and, uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. Oh, that's going to come in handy, Holmes, actually. Oh, we got an achievement. Salt Peter Explosion rocks docks. Locals at the Port of London had a rude awakening last night with loud bangs and thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant ship Moskva had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening, en route to Europe, when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. The Port Authority has yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if any crew members were on board at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing saltpeter leaking into the river, but with the area still off-limits to workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what transpired. Come, Dr Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Boom. Farewell, Mr Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs Fleming. He bought a dog. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. Mm -hmm. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill applied, mm. I see things that are not there. Yes. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. 
I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Very well. Let us go. <laughs> Playing Red Dead Redemption 2 right now. now. This feels very sand and e. Hello, pigeon. You all right? It's a massive pigeon in fairness. Where's his house? Where's his house, Holmes? He gestured this way. Then he said not much further. Well, that horse is a real slugger bed. Get up, horse. Watson, where's his fucking house? Fish. Carrots. Stenwick is just down the street from Barnes's bookshop. Well, thanks so much. John. Well, he did just you that way. So are we going this way? Let's go this way, just in case. Well, now we're just at Baker Street. This is bullshit. Why did you gesture that way, John Watson? Is it in fact this way? I'm the world's greatest detective and I cannot work out where a man li lives. Even though my friend knows where he lives. That's a cat. Well, he doesn't live back here, does he? Stenwick is just down the street from <sighs> Barnes's bookshop. Where? Tell me. Tell me. Is this a test? You know I'm a brilliant detective. Oh, Dr. John Watson, this is too much. I really must insist. Tell me. Has that man got a knife? Yes, that man's got a knife. Okay. Oh, and he's just sort of gesturing in a stabbing motion, is he? Watson, I really do feel like this would be a lot better if you just told me where we're going. Just down the street, he says. Right, we're going back to the bookshop before that man decides to put a hole in my stomach. Right, Barnes's bookshop. Just down the street, I'm told. Does he live here? Watson? <laughs> well, that's very funny. <laughs> that's Arthur Conan Doyle. Impressive stature, strong gaze. I think this man deserves a knighthood. <laughs> really, Holmes? Told you How his middle you name is Ignatius. Sure? On rare occasions, Watson, it can suffice to trust one's gut. There you go. Okay, it was it was worth the detour just for that, really. Is the, one of these the houses there, Watson? Oh, there's a fucking map, isn't there? Stenwick's Manor. Great. There's a map. There was a map the whole time. We can fast travel and everything. Great. Oh, Watson, thank you so much. That was so helpful. Oh, hello. He's a constable. What? Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. 
This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimi here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Sergeant Ruffles? Sergeant Ruffles? Are you a cocker spaniel, sir? Other missing people? Have there been other disappearances lately? Of course. Here and there. Of course. When life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Why won't you investigate? Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find Kimahia breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. You heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant, so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. All right. C can we do this inside? Is pissing it down? <laughs> oh, okay, maybe not then. Can you describe Kimi here? Tell me about Kimi here. Kimi here. He's foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. <laughs> Biggest man you've ever seen. And as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. Oh, heavens. He doesn't speak a whit of English. Never bothered to learn. But I may do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. When did he vanish? When did you last see your servant? <coughs> Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. Heavens! He must have escaped the night before yesterday. The bounder? I had to fetch the paper myself. May I see your servant's bedroom? His shack is in the garden. Oh, God! Did, miss it? did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. Had he run away before? I take it this is the first time Kimahir has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery <laughs> and brought him here to England in the first place. Okie dokie then. Is there any reason Kimahir may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. Whoopee! Did Kimmy here make off with anything of value? Heavens no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. <laughs> Still, he must have fled with some money on his person. No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. I'll be here. Mentally drafting my complaint. Sure. It seems like you basically enslaved him in your garden, but sure, you think about your complaint about how the police officer wasn't nice enough to you. Let's observe. Can we observe him? Why are you still here? Oh, fuck off. I was trying to observe you to work out what I can. I mean, I've already concluded you're a bell end, but still. Do, 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 do. Right. And you're confused as to why this man might want to have left. Might wanted to have left. To. Bleh. That wasn't a sentence. Oh well. Ooh. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details around the room. When you see a wavy green circle, press Q to observe the object more closely. Don't forget to pin the relevant evidence. Some clues won't be visible without it. Okay. We, well, we need to see the wavy green circle first. What is that? A scrap of hessian. Is that what he had to wear? These were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. Yes. What else have we got? Oh! <gasps> Someone attacked him! He was taken by force! Look at that! That's, that's a face imprint! Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. 
Someone took him. Someone took him away. Where's the second piece of in info we can get from crouching down here? Wow. S slightly discombobulating. Come on, I know there's another bit. Oh, that genuinely made me feel a bit queasy. No, there is something else there. Okay. What else can we get? Well, it's not. I'm not going to find it by concentrating. Oh, yeah. I mean, I did wonder what that was. That's a telescope. A small navy spyglass. Was he press ganged? Sherlock can use... Ooh, imagination to construct the past. Press Q to see imagination nodes. Interact with nodes to begin and create an accurate version of events. Hello. Interact with the nodes to begin. Oh, Jesus Christ! That was spooky. Yes. This is... T what am I missing? I'd Sorry, this is a bit clumsy of me, but also... <laughs> Hello, Holmes. Uh, sorry, Watson. Damn it. Yes, well, we know that happened. No air coming through it. Can we? Ah, uh, okay. Look, we can cancel the guy. All right. Button chops. The remains of a meal. Let's have a look thoroughly and then piece everything together. Ah! Some sort of ball. Oh. A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah, uh, I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. Mm. The ashes are long since cold. Okay, we're going to get another node off the back of that. Probably not. Yes, okay, he was having some dinner. Some carvings. A Maori nose fruit. Ngurus, they're called. Mm. Good to know. Good Bones to know. Made of hessian. Is Sten really so miserly? Evidently. Evidently. Okay. Right. He's having some mutton and drugs. Oh. Yeah, okay. No air coming through it. Okay. Is this a tanifa, a Maori water spirit, or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. All right. What else can we find around? This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. Lock with an unusual keyhole, it would seem. Ah, look! Ah, they knocked him out! Someone plugged it. The rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Okay. That is interesting. He's been kidnapped. I just need to find all of the little bits to prove it to me. 
Ah, ah look, 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 look. I have evidence that I need to pin. Cloth in the chimney. Pin it. Where does his trail lead? I think he was... Well, he wasn't press-ganged, but... Oh! I wonder. Let's keep looking. I'm worried there are things I've missed. Like... Well, I'm guessing that's not the key. Hmm. No. Okay. Alright, so that's everything out inside, it looks like. Is there something I've missed out here? Hello, what are you? What is that? Oh. Oh! He's... Look, he was dragged. He was dragged. Parallel tracks. Wheels. Who could have left these tracks? They seem fresh. Some sort of wagon. A wheelbarrow, perhaps? Okay. There must be more in the garden. What other evidence do sailors leave? <laughs> Hello? What's this? Ah! Knee print hiding. Hmm. Looks like a knee print. Size nine. Chewing tobacco. Ugh. Okay, chewing tobacco. Footprint. A shoe print, roughly size eleven, with a worn out sole. Mm. These are a workman's boots. Size nine. Someone out here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. To read the ground like an open book. Alright. Piece that together in a minute. Maybe we should chat to the. Should we talk to the guy? Hello! Okay. Where on earth are you going with this? Well. Do you happen to know Kimahir's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. My best efforts. What a bel -onde. Has Kimahir ever indulged in tobacco? No. The man doesn't even drink. Heavens! Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimahir's expenses since he struggled with the currency. Oh, I, I see. I would known if he used tobacco. Indentured slavery, was it? Where on earth are you going with this? I thought you were meant to be intelligent. I fucking am! The door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. 
Kimmy here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. Okay. Sure. I thought you were meant to be intelligent. He's been kidnapped. I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimahir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it distracting. Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. Hmm. Well, well, well. Oh, well, these all the little pips above the thing seem filled in now. That's nice. Yes, yes. There's someone there awaiting. Okay. But how do we tie all of this together? It is mildly frustrating to be like, I know what happened, and knowing that I have hoops to jump through first. Stenwick makes his servant live in a tool shed. You think you know someone. Mm, indeed. Indeed, my dear Dr. Watson. What else do we have here? Oh. Oh, does the little pin mark mean that these are the things we have to pin? That probably, you know, probably not the, the cloth. <laughs> right. Aha! Aha ha ha! We can interact with this thing after all. Is somebody planning to... Ah, bent to the left, not bent to the right. Well, no, no one's planning to rob him. To rob Stanwick, otherwise they'd have taken both keys, surely. They were just after Kimi here, I guess. And then... Okay. Pin evidence. The trail... Of Cthulhu, ha ha. Are there any more footprints? Are there are fresh parallel tracks in the garden, yes. Aha! Aha! Ooh, what's this? Yes, okay, wagon. Moldy, broken, not used recently, which rules that out. Okie dokie. Good. We're getting there. We need more data. Hello! More data. Parallel tracks, grass doesn't grow here. It's a wheelbarrow. It is a wheelbarrow. Pile of logs. Fallen? No. Chop Someone it. moved a car to this spot and then took it elsewhere. Can't see it anywhere in the garden. Yes. Validate. Oh, what? Oh, I need to choose. Do I need to? Ch okay, hold on. Yeah, all right, I'll take that one. Yeah, because he was knocked out. Okay. I understand. There are different hypotheses in each one. So we know that one's all right. We got that one all right.
Yeah. Oh, the keyboard was one of them, wasn't it? Was it? Why are they bleeding other two? Oh, that looks better, yeah. So I'll take that one. Okay. <laughs> I feel very silly. Oh, this is, yeah, this is wrong. That wasn't him at all. The sailor did that. Right, now what's the second one? What's the second one? This one. Next. There we go. Right, got it. Okay. That was elegant so once I got my head around far, it. The intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe right. and blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. Silly. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. Right. Remarkable. It makes total sense. Why have I got the newspaper pinned? Why has that been pinned? Because <laughs> it's annoying. How do I unpin evidence? Right. Can we just pin that instead? There we go. Yes, good. And let's unpin that as well, because we know what's going on. Right. One of the notable features of the abductor. Smokes is a sailor. Stenwick's testimony is useless. Not close, made of Hessian. That one, that one. Oh! <gasps> My god. The docks. It's all, it's all tied up in the docks. A sailor. Explosions. Explosions to cover that they're doing something at the docks. Glass in the chimney. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, no, these are... Footprints. That's what we need. Not the trail, we need the footprints. And the spyglass, and where's the chewing tobacco? Hmm. Do we not have enough in the notable features? I think we might not. Well, let's go talk to the the dickhead who kept a man in indentured slavery, shall we? You'd best have found something by now, gentlemen. Shut up. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimmy here. Likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now, one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimmy here never leaves your estate, then where did it go? Mm. I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. Well, I'm going to get those. I found the residue of narcotics in Kimahir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. 
Arcana here was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why haven't you found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Quite. Every second you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. Your I'm man not was, interested uh... in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering my investment. There it is. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. Uh, the point is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Shut up. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. I hate this and man. in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity. Yeah, teach you the art of go fuck yourself. <laughs> Alrighty. Now we're getting somewhere. That could have been smoother. But I feel like I'm... S Basically, now I've got to grips with the UI. Hopefully, the rest of this series will go smoother. Let's find out, I guess. Right. Now, then. What do we need to pin? Yep. Yep, thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Now, it looks like this access is blockhead. Or is it? Well, may as well go this way. What's this? <gasps> well, this surely that's grass. Wheels picked up grass along the way. Kimahir's cart, I gather. Mm-hmm. This is a rope. Sturdy rope, professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline. This knot is often used by sailors to create a bosun's chair. Interesting. What's a bosun's chair? Oh, hello. Clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. A strange substance. I have my suspicions based on the color and consistency, but would you care to hazard a guess, Doctor? That's that's dried seawater, surely. Oh, Roy. Roy Salisbury. Could that be the name of our man? Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say salt peat. Oh ho! Agreement. Well done. I knew it was to do with the docks. Well done, Johnny. You put Doc and Sailor together. Marvellous. Investigation scene complete. Guess we'll go back and bother the man. Oh, well, let's tell you what. Let's mind palace this a little bit. Notable features of the abductor. Okay, Sailor's Knot. That's what we need. There we go. There it is. Kidnapped by a sailor. Lovely. Now, where does the trail lead? Well, it was Salt Peter. Sailor's not. And a calling card. No? Okay. Sailor's not. Well, it was Salt Peter. Abductor is a sailor. Okay. Oh, it kind of like truncates them, doesn't it? The London Advertiser? Because that would be... That would be about... Oh no, it's the Strand. The Docks and the Saltpeter. There we go. The Port of London. We now know that Kimi here's kidnapper is most likely a sailor, that his wallet bears saltpeter residue, and that there was a recent saltpeter accident in the port of London. Everything suggests that to find Kimi here, we must head to the port of London. There is no time to lose. It is vital that we find a cab to the port of London immediately. Well, Holmes, actually... The Strand proved not so useless after all. Hmm. The saltpeter accident. Doctor, do you recall? The port of London. Of course. The footwear, the spyglass. Indeed. We shall need to take a cab there. 
And we shall. There isn't a moment to lose, except we're going to do it next week, because, uh, well, it's time to, to um, yeah. Yes, well, yeah, I suppose, I've, I suppose that's safe. Um, it's, it's time for me to, to, to stop this foolishness for one week. Um, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Presney Kiedini. It was very interesting. I think there is a good game to, well, there's a good adventure to be had here. Um, I'm sorry that I was a bit clumsy with uh, all of the controls and the deduction and kind of trying to brute force it before I'd found everything. Next time I, well, I know how the UI works now and also I will just continue to gather data. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where this mystery goeth. So um, that's it from me. Um, I will catch you next time on Press Any Kid Any. Um, in the meantime, there's loads of stuff on the channel for you to watch, including past live streams and series of, of this show and all sorts. I also have a Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. You can find a link in the description of this video if you are uh, willing to uh, support me directly and uh, you are able to do so. It's very much appreciated. But either way, I just want to say thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you next time.